Wait, can you see that? LED display. Integrity first, quality assurance. What do we want to bet that this thing actually has the, uh, the specs that it says it's supposed to have? Like one millisecond response time. I mean, that's kind of the only one I'm worried about. Uh, oh, and I guess brightness. 350 nits should be good-ish. I read somewhere that the ideal is 400 to seven, well, 400 plus any sort of outdoors application. Um, so this is nice. They give you USB-C to USB-C. Love that. USB-C to USB-A. Not bad. Then we got a HDMI. Can never have too many HDMIs. And then a, a little power brick. That's awesome. No documentation, but I suppose it doesn't need it, really. And I think uh, it's super light, which is good. And yeah, just a plastic shell on the thing. Nothing fancy. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we got a couple of Got a couple of mounting holes here on the back, so that's good. I can marry that up to some sort of 3D printed bracket, which will let me put it on tripods as well as my steering wheel. Need a decent chunk of power, three amps at five volts. That should be doable. So I went flying today and I had some crashes. I don't know how well this will show up here under this lighting, but this thing got pretty beat up today. Incredible. Like, look at this. The DJI would have fucking exploded, but this thing. And the only thing that broke was propellers. And it's a shame. I didn't take enough. I took only one spare set of propellers and, like, immediately broke them as well. And so had to come home, maybe not even halfway through the second pack. But still, a really good flight, and I'm super happy with it. Uh, we've figured out some stuff to do with the range. It turned out I was actually only transmitting video at 25 milliwatts the other day, and that's why I think I was struggling with range. So we bumped that up to 700 milliwatts, and we also, we dropped the resolution to 720p, but kept the frame rate at high, because someone somewhere said that that's pretty optimal for the avatar system, at least as of like nine months ago. I don't know about more recent firmware, but I was pretty happy flying around at 720p. I also learned the VTX actually saves video files. So I'm gonna check that out too. Hopefully I've got some good footage or better footage than DVR to share with you. But uh, yeah, really good flight today. Although I had an issue arming and I think that's because I was fucking around in beta flight with the GPS rescue settings. And I did something where it just, it wouldn't start until it had like eight or 10 satellites, uh, which had me freaking out uh, and sort of like, cause the VTX would overheat while it was hunting for satellites. But I didn't know that that's what I was waiting for. So I was like turning it off, turning it back on, trying the stuff in the controller, looking through the modes, all this crap. All I had to do was just wait for satellites. <laughs> so what we ended up doing in the end was just sitting in the car with this thing under the air conditioner. And uh, that, that, that got us there. That got us over the line. But anyway, I want to get some power to this. Well, let's get, let's get this fan, fan on that VTX. And then... So the power brick that comes with the screen uses the USB-A cable. So that's fine. Oh. Okay, so that's power. My desk. My poor desk is getting so fucking cluttered. I need a bigger desk, actually. Wouldn't that be good? But then I need a bigger studio. All right, goggles on. Oh, I ordered some uh, patch antennas that drop perfectly into this uh, geometry here. I think they're from CADEX, and they just released them. I'm not, I'm not too sure. This is another one of those late-night bleary-eyed purchases, because after yesterday's flight, I was like, yeah, I need to... Uh, I need better antennas, that's clearly the problem. I didn't think about the uh, the transmission power in the settings, but whatever. So this needs to be set to, or rather, I need to find my HDMI cable. <laughs> Holy shit! It works. It works, it works, it works. Just straight away. And the latency is... Basically nothing, like it, it's the same as if I was looking through the goggles, it feels like. Yeah. Crash flip switch, disarmed. Oh yeah, I tried turtle mode today, I, I couldn't, couldn't make heads or tails of that. How exactly that works. But yeah, look at that. Whoa, man. What the fuck? <sighs> yeah, I think this would be a totally, totally awesome way to fly. This is a nice... 
nice big screen. So I'm just thinking like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like being able to see my satellites in the corner is cool. And like this stuff, this stuff is all like a sort of peripheral vision when you're in the goggles. But here it's, it's really easy to glance at it and see. So let's have a look. Yeah, bright, we're only at half brightness right now. So let's bump that up to 100. Okay, not bad. Let's get a torch. <laughs> okay, if it's a super bright day, definitely not going to be able to use this out in the sun, but then I could just use it from the shade. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this is pretty sweet. I think this is pretty fucking sweet. We need to test it though, don't we? We need to fly. We need to fly with this. Let's do that tomorrow. All right, check this out. So I designed and printed this bracket for the back of the, uh, the monitor here, and this should perfectly sit sort of at the top of my steering wheel, which is good. And then it also has a captive quarter 20 here, which is a very common threaded insert thingy for photography and video gear. So I can do something super fun with this. <laughs> Take this thing, this little magic, uh, this little small rig, magic claw grippy arm thing, thread that in there. This is captive because the, it doesn't look captive, but I'll show you. Bought a whole bunch of these a while back. It's a nice little kit on Amazon, but yeah. See how it's got like a, a lip on that end? So that end is facing down. This end with the lip is like facing down against the back of the screen. And then the, yeah, the geometry of the mount is such that it's holding it in place, which is cool. And also uh, the hole was just small enough that this didn't, slide in it had to it had to be turned in so it's got a little bit of grip as well so i'm really happy with the fit and finish of that i'm confident it's not going anywhere these obviously it's only mounted here by these two screws so these are just sort of like free floating but they're, they're okay i mean this doesn't have to do any sort of heavy duty shit so i'm not really worried about it but yeah what was i fucking saying so anyway <laughs> so, so we got a quarter 20 here so we can install this thing all right and then this thing here can go on my controller mount that I made earlier. Fuck, I love 3D printing. So I can go there like that. Tighten the ever-living shit out of that. <laughs> it's, okay, it's uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, but it works. I mean, it's it's funny. The heaviest part is actually this. Yeah, I think the heaviest part is the bar. Actually, the screen's not too bad. But you can sort of do this. I mean, it doesn't feel. It's okay. It's really pressing against my fingers here where I'm sort of like putting my fingers back there. So it's a little weird. It would be more comfortable if I had a grip like this and I used my thumbs, but because I've learned, because I've learned to fly doing pinch, it's a little sketchy, but I mean, it totally works. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I think it probably, it would make more sense to carry like a tripod and then mount the goggles sort of on the tripod as well as the screen. So it can be like a kind of little, like a receiving fly station thing. But yeah, I think for flying in the car, it's going to be fantastic. There's only one way to find out. Before we do that though, I want to try something maybe stupid. I want to update Betaflight to 4.4 which is a step I missed before I initially set it up. So I'm pretty sure if I do this, I'm going to have, Ooh, Ooh. Oh, she's wobbly. You seeing this? She's wobbly. Why are you wobbly, darling? <laughs> there we go. Just needed to tighten that down. There we go. Nice and stiff. Cool. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So I need to, well, I don't need to, but I want to upgrade this to beta flight. 4.4, which is something I should have done when I first set it up, but I didn't um, because I just forgot and I jumped right into the setup steps. GPS rescue in 4.4 is apparently shitloads better according to some people on YouTube. So I'm gonna, I want that. I want it to be able to land itself. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I, I enjoy, enjoyed that about the DJI. Apparently 4.4 also fixes the issue with the OSD being four by three. Like I can't fully place the OSD elements around the 16 by nine frame. I'm sort of limited to like a, a box. So if I can fix that, that'd be pretty cool. But it does mean I think I'm gonna have to go through and do the entire setup again, because my understanding is if you update beta flight, it just resets everything. And there's no way to like export a backup of your config. 
So let's just do it, I guess. Fuck it. It's funny, I'm at a point where, like, the drone flies, you know, it works. So I'm hesitant to, like, do anything to it. But we just gotta, we just gotta do it. We just gotta fucking send it. Now, I think, I think we can do it over just USB. Like, we don't have to have power on here. We don't need to connect power here, do we? We can just plug in the USB. Oh, this is something I want to reprint. I keep forgetting. <laughs> the, the USB. Ugh, it's hidden. Yeah, it's a little janky, but whatever. Beta flight. Dare I do it? Yeah, fuck it. You only live once. Though hopefully, hopefully this bird lives more than once. Okay, well that's, that's not working. Uh, it gave me some sort of freeze, so I've had to search it and I gotta download some shit apparently. Driver fixer. And then, yeah, hmm. Flashing. Hell yeah, let's go. All right, so we have returned to the beautiful uh, park here on another confused Australian day. Doesn't know if it wants to be rainy and wet or sunny, sort of oscillating between the two. But anyway, check this out. Look at that. So, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be fucking awesome. Um, but before we test it, I want to test GPS rescue because I've, I've updated to beta flight 4.4 on the flight controller and we went through the whole setup process for GPS rescue and I think it's going to work this time. So yeah, we'll come back and test this in a minute. But... Alright, so this seems like as good a spot as any. I've brought a fan so we can cool the VTX while we wait for satellites uh, because that was a problem we were having. So power... It's not much, but it'll work. Fresh props. Let's see if I can get this right today. And hopefully I got it right in beta flight as well. I'm pretty sure I did. Ran the uh, the wizard and all that. Went through all the Bardwell steps. I had to watch his videos again to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we got it all. Mistake? No. Yeah, that's right. So I think the easy way to remember props out is that on the sides, you want them to sort of come together the leading edges to come together like that. Grass is kind of long here. I wonder... Ooh! Let's put it over there on that grate. Welcome to HTX. One of these ends works better in the goggles than the other, so I've got to remember to keep it... to keep that. Yeah, this one. I think it's got a, a fatter or more a more narrow inner diameter to the barrel. There we go, those are working. So those are on. That's on. Let's go put this over on that grate with a battery and wait for it to lock satellites. Hopefully not overheat. Here we go. I think this will be a pretty cool little launch pad. Although 100%, oh no, <laughs> we're in luck. Although that might fit. No, we're good. Is this thing dead? Oh, there we go. Okay, so... Currently sitting at zero satellites. Standby mode, low RF power. Oh, let's double check that we've got our transmit settings good. 700 milliwatts, 720p, high frame rate. Okay, that should be good. That was good last time I flew. Now we wait. All right, we've been waiting a couple minutes. we got four satellites and GPS coordinates now, so this is looking good. I don't have the OSHD, OSDH, whatever it is, number showing yet. Maybe that takes more satellites. I'm pretty sure I enabled that in the console, but in any case, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's wait for, let's see if we can get 10 and then we'll go. Okay, we've been waiting a while here and we're not doing any better than um, four satellites. I think it's been about five or six minutes or so. Uh, let's just try with four satellites and see what happens. Also, I don't know why, but it started repeatedly beeping. Weird. <laughs> In any case, let's just try arming it and see what happens. Actually, since it is a new configuration of beta flight, I will just line of sight start it up here and make sure the motors are doing what I expect them to do. Ah. So it doesn't want to arm. Um, 
<laughs> Don't know. All right, we've got to connect Betaflight and see what it says. Oh, it stops doing the beeping thing. I'm going to see if I can connect to this and uh, maybe it can give us an error message or something, tell us what's going on. MSP connection is active. Oh, we got five satellites now. MSP connection is active. This was the same thing I was getting the other day, but I disabled, or rather, I enabled this, allow arming without fix. So that should be fine, if that's what that is. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Status, SD card failed. I don't have an SD card in there, so that's why that's doing that. Uh, gyro... Yeah, CLI, MSP, arming disable flags. So we got five satellites, 3D fix, false. It looks like... Ah, come back. Well, that sucks. Oh, 3D fix, true. It looks like we we're in the right sort of spot. Yeah, let's try arming it again. Let's see if it works. No. Oh, is it because of that? Why are you not working? You armed at home, you bastard. Why'd you wait till I drove all the way out here to not work? Uh, there's a lady with a dog now. So even if we could arm, I wouldn't fly it. Why don't you want to fly? What have I forgotten? Man, this Speedy B app is kind of shit sometimes. Uh, it's so frustrating because like it worked at home. It was powering on at the table, at the desk, it powered on. And uh, here, it's just, oh, it says VTX overheating. We got seven satellites. So that's not great. Uh, well, it's great and it's not great, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta put the fan closer to the VTX. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we got the temperature back down below 90. Uh, still sitting at seven satellites. I think it's been about 10 minutes now. Let's, uh, let's just keep waiting. What's my battery doing? Battery's at, uh, fuck. 24.5, 24.6 volts. The goggles voltage has come down a bit. We were at 8.4 to begin with. Now it's 7.5. So maybe these aren't the best batteries to run the goggles off. I don't know. Hmm. That could just be sag as well. Hard to say. I think I'm done waiting for satellites. Fuck GPS rescue. Let's see if the screen is a good way to fly or not. So what I'll do to be fair is I'll run one pack now on the goggles and then we'll jump in the car power up the lcd and fly a second pack with the lcd and see how that goes so it's arm rescue off all right that's flying good nice and stable pictures fine it's clear we're at 700 Milliwatts. No break up over there. See, I wanted to have GPS rescue working, so if, if I like flew all the way over here and I lost signal or whatever, it would come home. Like, that'd be sick. But we don't have that. But the picture held up all the way over there, that's pretty good. My horizon, nice and level. We're at 23.4 volts. Oh, something we do have now though, which is cool. Where is it on my screen? Well, we've dropped down to six satellites, but now we've got a speedometer. So we're 40 kilometers an hour, 90, 90K an hour there. Holy shit. Big backflip. Um, what was the thing I wanted to do? Oh yeah, I want to try this inverted thing. Backwards flying, like that. Uh, I lost my sense of direction there for a second. <laughs> that was trippy. Whoa, nearly went down. 22.6, so we've still got a little more life in this one. Yeah, goggles are a fine way to fly, I think. Like, my face is uncomfortable, which sucks. Uh, it's The weather's nice today, so I'm not fogging them up, which is also nice. Still, like, looking through a tube. I don't think any amount of padding is going to fix that. There's just always going to be vignetting at the edges of this screen because of the 
the extra wide field of view. But this is a pretty good experience. I get why people do it. Like you, you have no choice but to be immersed in what you're doing. Because like I can't see anything else except for this little screen in front of me. Oh, just heard a beeping. I think it was trying to tell me battery low maybe when I was hitting it hard there. We dropped below that sort of that low battery threshold. I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm afraid to like full send it. <laughs> Let's come up here. I'm like <laughs> flies going into my nose. <laughs> Where are we? There's us, chilling on the grass. Where's my beautiful camera lady? I see her white shoes. The image is not really good enough to discern more than that from this distance. Oh, I can see the camera. I can see me and the bag. Let's go over here. Go around this pole. I'm tempted to try and trippy spin it, but I'm a little too close to us uh, to feel comfortable doing that. Because the last thing I want is to send these propellers into uh, my lovely girlfriend here or myself. Because I'm pretty sure these propellers will cut us up quite badly. Uh, <laughs> like the RPM of them, I'm sure, is insane. Okay, I'll get the low battery warning now, so I'm gonna come in and try and land. This is a good little flight. 20.8 volts, that's not great. I've gone a little too over here. So let's come in. Oh, where's my landing pad? Over here. Can I do it, can I do it, can I do it? Ah, oh, hey, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> not not the not the best landing, but we fucking did it. Okay. Let's get that one off. All right, so that was that battery. A little tip I picked up from uh, FPV Jesus, Joshua Bardwell, is he said wrap a, a uh, rubber band around a battery when you're finished with it. That way you can remember that's a dead battery. And then you don't accidentally fly with a dead battery and fall out of the air. All right, so pack number two. Let's get the fan on that. Now let's run over to the car and try the LCD. So let's chuck these up here. Hopefully, oh shit, fucking. This just keeps falling out on me. I'm gonna have to, yeah, figure something better out than that. My car has a shit battery, so what we're we gonna do, let's run the car, then we get some air conditioning too. So I should have enough power here to hopefully run this thing. Fuck yes. Okay, and then, <laughs> so then this will go into the HDMI out on the goggles, and then we should see a nice picture. Hey, which one's out? That one. So HDMI out. Transmitter is disconnected. Is it because of the hill? Like there's just, there's, I just can't connect to it even with the 700 milliwatts? That would be funny. Well, hmm. Okay, yeah, so I'm wondering if like this hill here is, is what's in the way. Because we've got control link, but no, no video. So let's just bring this up to the, I guess, the top of the hill. Yeah, that works. Check it out, check it out, look. Can you see that? Wow. We got a yeah. picture. Okay, now, we got the flashing red bars, which is telling us what? We're getting a super shitty low bit rate. Why? For some reason this is all grayed out now. This wasn't grayed out before. Oh, and I've lost, I've lost signal again. I guess the car is, is like interfering enough. Oh yeah, the car is just like 
creating heaps of interference. So maybe what we should do is crack that window. Will this reach? If we put, if we maybe put that where it won't fall out, maybe like that. And then, can you reach out and put this on the roof of the car? Maybe like this? Oh, here, I got, I got you, I got you. <laughs> Going renegade style here. I even, so even now, with the goggles on the roof, we're still getting this flashing red. So let's just try and take off. Let's see what happens. So maybe the signal will pick up once we get in the air. Maybe. Hopefully nothing catastrophic happens. We're probably going to cut some grass right now. Oh, it says VTX overheating 100 degrees. Um, but yeah, we're flying right now. VTX temperature. Let's get that down. Let's just do some circles, I guess. Uh, 50 megabits, so we got a good signal. Thank fuck. <laughs> good signal. Temperature on the VTX has now come down. We're not getting any warnings. Uh, okay. All right, this is an experience. So I immediately, one of the biggest benefits to this I'm seeing is like all the OSD elements, I can now see really clearly and really easily. There's no vignetting, so that's nice. So the question, hey, yeah, my, uh, my lovely assistant can see the picture too. And everything's working well. I don't feel handicapped in any way. I feel immersed uh, like I always do. There's that smeary floor effect people have talked about with the, uh, the walk snail digital transmission system. That's not a huge deal. But yeah, I feel just as immersed flying this way. Obviously, I could be e more easily distracted. You know, if something was to happen in my peripheral vision, like a car accident or something, I'm going to look at that, um, not just hear it and be like, what was that noise? And so that could create some risk. We've got a warning there. I'm not sure what it was. But yeah, this works Fucking awesome. Wow. And I love that we've got the... Oh, I, was going to, I was about to say, I love that we have the speedo now, but we actually have zero satellites. And so <laughs> uh, I've got no speedometer because obviously that works on GPS data, which we just don't have right now. That's fine. So yeah, definitely going to buy one of those M10. GPS chips, because, uh, yeah, the M8 just takes way too fucking long. Especially, I don't know if because of where I am, we have less satellites or something. Um, here's the car. <laughs> I won't fly over the road. But yeah, this is a fucking pretty cool, pretty cool experience. As good, if not better, than the goggles. Because like I said before, you know, the goggles is literally just looking at a screen in a dark room. And here is literally just looking at a screen in my car. <laughs> uh, both get the job done. So can you, can you FPV on a $150 portable gaming monitor? Absolutely. fucking lootly. Let's do one big loop. Whoa. All right. Oh, oh. Let's come in and land. So I want to, I want to get good at landing, <laughs> but I keep like, I get like, uh, I get antsy about it and then I, and then I fuck it up. Ah, upside down. Oh, this will be a good opportunity to try turtle mode. So I set that up. Oh, but we lost video. <laughs> Never mind. Oh wait, video's back. Uh, so this button. So now my understanding is turtle mode's active. Yeah. Crash flip switch is on. So now if I fuck with this stick, we should... No? Oh, maybe it's this stick. No? Yeah, it's not working for me. That's okay. Uh, we will look into that later. All right, I'm going to call that a fucking success. Let's go get the drone. All right, so we have come up on this place again. Now with the, the transmitter power boosted to 700 milliwatts, and I think if we put the goggles right here and fly out straight ahead, I think we're going to be good. Hopefully, anyway. 
really, really would like to not lose my drone in there. USB superposition, you bitch. There we go. Uh, power. Welcome to HTX. Better warning. Yeah, so I bought two of these 1500 milliamp hour batteries. So that'll be interesting to try. I think they're the same length as the other ones, so I should, shouldn't have any issues with um, clearance with the propellers. See how close that is right there. No, it's not too, too close. If that pops out, then it could be kind of close. I think we'll be okay. All right, there's our picture. Zero satellites, so I don't think it'll arm, even with that setting. Oh no, okay. Oh, it's cool seeing it in my... I could fly it line of sight right now, but I could also look at the screen. That's fucking cool. Picture's pretty rough, not gonna lie. Before, when I came out here the other day, I got a little bit out on the water about here and it started flashing red and saying to me, like, return, get back, you're out of signal. So it looks like we're doing better than that today. Um, we couldn't get this far. I remember that's that dirt, that patch of uh, dirt here. We definitely couldn't get down here without losing signal. So that's cool. Again, I got to keep in mind, basically the edge of that water there is is restricted airspace, so I can't can't actually go over there. And there's the beautiful sunset over there. We've actually <laughs> we've got about thirty minutes left before uh, before it's no longer officially daylight and we can not legally fly. But we're still legal at the moment. And actually, you know what? This is 100% legal, I think. Uh, because I've got line of sight of the drone. Um, I'm not, you know, my vision's not impeded by goggles. And uh, yeah, I can, I can literally like look over this screen and see it flying out there. Can you see it, baby? <laughs> Let's go up high. Woo! So... Yeah, so it's daylight. Uh, I got visual line of sight of the drone in addition to the FPV system here with the screen. Yeah, the picture's okay. I'm not noticing any issues with latency, so that's good. I can actually hear the drone all the way from here. Those motors are so loud. Uh, yeah, I don't detect any latency. It's just, you know, it's not the best picture. This is 720p mode. So maybe we could try, we could try 1080 on the next pack. Maybe that'll be better. Um, but we are, we are running out of daylight quickly. I don't know how much longer I'm going to get out of these packs. I guess it's a trade-off, right? Because they're, oh, now we're breaking the law. We're too high, 140 meters. Can't go higher than 120. <laughs> 120 is the limit. Still no satellites. So I think I'm definitely going to buy a better GPS chip because. The M8 sucks really bad, at least <clears throat> at least down here in Australia, where I am. Uh, it just takes way too long to, to lock satellites. And that's not fun, waiting around for bloody satellites before I can fly. So there's us. Should be able to see me hover above that fence there. I still got a headlight out. That's funny. I did buy headlights. I just haven't installed them yet. 21.5 volts, 22.5. Yeah, let's go down here again. So is this picture... Could you do freestyle with this picture? That's the question, isn't it? Got to remember not to go too far down there. Oh, low battery. All right, let's come back. Yeah, so there's that trade-off, right? It's like more milliamp hours, but then it's heavier. I think uh, this particular battery is about 30, 35 grams heavier than the 1300 milliamp hour. So, yeah, is that... Is it worth it? I don't know. We'll have to look at the, uh, the flight times. But then also the flight characteristics will be different. You know, how I actually flew... Oh, you want to film it coming down. <laughs> Whoa, 
my god. I think there's a bit of wind there. All right, let's come down here. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful view of the car. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do one more pack and then we'll go. Let's do something a bit fun here. We've got a little bit of time left. So let's go full fucking renegade right now. Wow, are you sure? <laughs> All right, uh, what's the time? Just let's be absolutely sure. It's 8.22, so we've got uh, 10, 17 minutes left, I think. Wow. <laughs> rescue off. Yeah, no rescue mode. That was a cool sound. <laughs> so I guess what we're bumping into now as well is, is the low light performance of the sensor, this particular camera. Which is, yeah, it's getting super grainy, so it's... Uh, we don't know exactly what it's giving us, but it's presumably a pretty high ISO right now. Well, it's still totally flyable. It's, um... Not the prettiest picture, but fuck, doesn't really need to be, does it? So maybe I should have just gone with analog. <laughs> 53 meters. So how long does it take me to get to... 120 is the limit. So we're at 100 and, oh, 127, 129, 130. A little high there. There's a sunset. At 197, 96, 98, 99, 100 meters. Let's come down. So yeah. Can you freestyle? Can you do it? <laughs> Can you fucking do it? <laughs> Man, I wish we had some abandoned buildings. I want to try flying this through through uh, some cool structures, you know, hitting some gaps and shit. Did I say low battery? No. Because obviously, you know, with a field, there's not much here to sort of fly around. fence. Definitely don't want to try and fly through that fence because it's a barbed wire fence. That would just end in disaster. Some broken props or worse. Oh, something I forgot to mention is I changed the rates. Um, I've actually copied the rates that I'm using in trip uh, trip FPV or trip simulator, which is it? I think it's trip FPV. Yeah. I've copied the rates from that cause I've been spending so many hours in trip that I wanted to know if I could make this feel like what I'm used to in trip. And so I made a drone in trip that's about the same weight and I used the rates I like from trip. And then I've copied those to here and yeah, you know what? It actually, actually it's, it's, a lot like playing in Trip, except Trip looks way better. <laughs> Real life is not as good as the, the fucking computer game. That's hilarious. But this is more fun, you know, because this has risk. I got expensive gear on the line. And risk makes everything more fun. All right, battery's done. Probably shouldn't push it too hard now. Should just come in for a landing. And then we should go home. Dare I land it on the roof? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> hmm. Nice. Let's go home.